Hello everyone and welcome to the second edition of Cotegna Talk Show under the topic Brain Seeds, Oils and Oil Seeds. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Camila Pineda, Regional Communications Coordinator for Latin America. I'm very happy and proud to be part of Cotegna for almost seven years. Seven happy years. I'm based in El Salvador and being in this regional communications position has allowed me to meet and to work with many talented people around the world and also to learn more about our network, about our services and capabilities. I am delighted to be moderating this talk show in which our special guests will be covering very interesting topic about grains, seeds, oils and oil seeds and will also be answering your questions at the end of the session. So please feel free to add your questions at the Q&A button. And please also have in mind that this session, that this talk show will be recorded for the ones who cannot join us today, or if you want to watch it again. So before we start with this session, I want to introduce you to our experts and special guests. Roberto Cordero, Vice President for Latin America at Cotecna Inspection. He has more than 20 years in the tech sector, and he's responsible for all Cotecna Inspection activities such as agriculture, food, government and trade, metals and minerals, and consumer goods and retail in Central and South America, covering Argentina, Brazil, Bolivia, Chile, El Salvador, Guatemala, Paraguay, Peru, and Uruguay. We have also Luis Cavalcante. He is the Tech Governance Manager for Cotegna Brazil, specialist in food safety, working in the commodities, logistics, plant quality, certifications, phytosanitary treatment area for over 15 years. He has an extensive knowledge in grain storage, plant classification, import and export of commodities. Welcome, Luis. Hello, everyone. Then we have Patricia Tello, Managing Director of Agronomica. She is one of the founders of Agronomica, Laboratory of Phytosanitary Diagnosis and Consulting at Brazil. She's an agronomist and holds a Master of Science in Agriculture Defense by the Federal University of Picosa. She has a strong knowledge and passion for plant health and food security. Welcome, Patricia. Welcome. Hello, everyone. <laughs> we also have Valmir Duarte agronomist and also holds a Master of Science in Plant Pathology by the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul. He holds a PhD in Plant Health by Louisiana State University, USA. He was the Technical Director and Partner of Agronomica for 16 years. He also worked as full-time Professor of Plant Pathology and Entomology Department at the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul. Welcome, Valvir. Thank you, Camila. Uh, welcome to everyone. And we also want to welcome Francisco Ferrer, Food Safety Director at Cotegna Spain and Operations Director at Fitosoil. He has over 15 years of expertise working as Operations and Production Manager in the food safety and food testing industry. Impressive experience in supply chain optimization and laboratory and business process improvement. Bienvenido, Francisco. Muchas gracias, Camila. Hola a todo el mundo. Thank you, everybody. So, to start this, this talk show, uh, Roberto Cordero will share with us uh, an introduction with an overview of Latin American region at Cotecna, the countries where we are operating, the line of business covered, and the services we offer. So, let's watch Roberto's video. Hello, everyone. As Camila said, I'm in charge of Latin America Operating Group, which is an important cluster within Cotegna. Latin America represents around 50% of the total revenue of the Cotegna Group and is present in nine countries, El Salvador and Guatemala in the Central America, and in the rest of the region, Brazil, Peru, Chile, Bolivia, Paraguay, Uruguay, and Argentina. We currently offer inspection, analysis, and certification services in three main industries, agriculture, government and trade solution, and mineral and metals. To support these activities, we have more than 660 employees in the region, 10 laboratories, and 20 offices. 
of the total revenue, 40% come from agricultural services, 40% from government services, and 10% from metal and minerals. The main countries are Argentina and Brazil, thanks to their strong grain export industry, where we offer inspection and testing services to meet the technical quality and safety requirements demanded by our destination markets. In El Salvador and Guatemala, we have important contract with governments to collaborate in custom control and ensure that export and exported cargos uh, comply with custom condition and uh, his restrictions as well. In Peru and Chile, countries where mining is one of their main activities, we have laboratories and mineral inspection services for export. Recently in Brazil, we made a very important uh, acquisition, the Agronomic and Phytosanitary Laboratory uh, joined the group recently, which increased our service offers for the region and creates uh, great work synergy together with other laboratories uh, within the group. Uh, as emerging countries, uh, Latin America has a lot of opportunities for the testing, inspection and certification industry. And Cotegna is here to consolidate them, working hard to serve our clients, meet their expectations and continue investing to diversify our portfolio, expand our geographic presence and increase our offer to our current and future clients. Thanks. Thank you, Roberto, for your participation. So Roberto's introduction leads us to the next topic, Brazil imports and exports. And to talk about this, I want to hand over the floor to Luis Cavalcante, and Luis, I have a question for you to start developing this topic. Can you briefly describe the Brazilian market for agri-commodities? Hello, thank you, Camila, and greetings to all. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation to this talk show, okay? And I hope to be able to contribute with all participants. But talking about your question, although Brazil is not among the top 10 largest exports in the world, in terms of export of feed oils and grains, it occupies the 24th position. So even so, Brazil is the largest country in potential arable land, one of the top five producers of 34 agricultural commodities and the largest net, net agricultural export in the world, despite the persistence protectionism and rising non-tarific barriers in global food trade. Uh, by the way, its position as the main supplier of uh, agricultural commodities around the world and its competitiveness in this market suggests a potential for continued growth in the agri agricultural sector. Uh, Brazil used it in 2021 about 74 point million hectares for agricultural production and still has more than 400 million hectares of total potential arable land, suggesting that uh, continued growth in agriculture is possible. Okay, but uh, we have several factors that we are expected to present challenges for the future expansion of production and trade, of course, as price increase for fuel and other commodities, inland transportation, port and storage issues, credit constraints, and fertilized shortage. Even with all this challenge, Brazil is the fourth largest grain producer in the world, behind China, USA, and India, and second largest grain producer behind only USA. Uh, Brazil's grain production from 11 to 20 grew 5.33 per year, Compared to the world, it's only uh, 2.03 globally. This means that Brazil has grown more than twice as much as the world. Currently, Brazil is the world's largest exports of soybean, whole sugar, uh, frozen beef, and poultry. Uh, I think, and some of you here may agree, Brazil is indeed a world power in agricultural production 
and with great possibilities to improve its results with the use of technology. Uh, Brazil is current the 12th economy in the world and will be, according to KPMG and PwC projections, among the five richest nations in the world in 2050. And certainly leader in the production of many products. So the, the challenges are many. Even so, the country has a, a, a promising future ahead of it, okay? So that's very interesting, Luis. And having said that, what are the main three crops in Brazil? Oh, uh, well, the Brazilian agricultural production of 21-22, according to CONAB, reached 271 million tons of grains. According to recent data from the company in January 23, the estimated for the next crop, 22-23 harvest, will be even higher, around 310 million tons. But the, the main crops in Brazil are soybeans, maize, sugarcane, and we have beans too, bread or brown beans, and coffee, of course. Now let's talk about imports. And can you briefly describe the country's agricultural imports? No, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Brazil, it's not a big import of agricultural products, considering mainly the large volumes of food produced in the country. However, uh, we can highlight some specific needs where the level of self-sufficiency has not yet been reached. And there is a need to supply to the, the internal demand of the country, okay? Uh, this explains why the, the, the wheat is within the agricultural sector, the most important products produced for, for years because the Brazilian domestic com consumption is traditionally greater than the production of the grain in, in the country, resulting, of course, in the uh, dependency of Brazil against the other countries. Uh, wheat imports come mainly from Argentina, followed by countries like USA, Paraguay, Russia, and Uruguay. During the last year, Brazil imported about 60 million tons of wheat to supply uh, its domestic demand and maintain the regulatory stocks. However, according to Embrapa, and we hope <laughs> Brazil becomes self-sufficient in five years because of uh, an improvement work developed by the agency that prom promises to produce quality wheat and in sufficient quantity in areas already cultivated in the Cerrado. In second place, we have fish. In third place, we have, we have uh, fruits and nuts. But uh, in currently, in fourth place, we have corn, which reaches its import peak in 2021, mainly due to the drop in production in 2020. Uh, the low stocks accumulated over the years and increased domestic demand to produce animal protein with practically 50% of sports forecast for the year reverted to the domestic mar market. In 2022, due to the drop in import uh, in, order, in the order of 17%, the result of the stabilization of domestic stocks and increased the grain production were uh, representing 11% uh, of total spending on imports of agricultural products. The forecast for imports for this year remained the clean decline due to the optimistic positions of the total to be produced in this year. Okay. And how about the exports? What are the top exported products from Brazil? Yeah, and um, this subject is very, we have a lot of talk, but uh, I can briefly talk the, that the, the value of sports of agriculture and livestock produced in Brazil totaled around $75 billion in 2022, of which soybeans represented 62%, corn 16, coffee 11, cotton 4.9%, and we have other products and wheat, 
Okay, but uh, if we consider our products exported by Brazil, we have a total of $334 billion, of which soybeans still the leader. We've represented 14%, and you have crude petroleum with 13%, and iron ore with 8.6%, Camila. Those, those are very interesting facts, Luis. <laughs> and which were the main important countries of Brazilian soybean in 2022? Oh, uh, the, the, the export of soybean brought to Brazil in 22 approximately 46.7 billion, as I said before, an increase of 20.8% when compared to 2021. Even if the, with the, the reduction of 18.3% in volume export for that year due to the high international price found in the same period, period okay, of 2021. Uh, the reduction in export volume is directly linked to the increase in corn export volumes, which in the same pe period in 21 uh, that uh, had not yet start started. Uh, although China has, has reduced its market share in the purchase of Brazilian soybeans. And still, and this is still the absolutely leader with 68% of Brazilian soybean exports going to the Chinese ports. And in second place, we have Spain with 4.75%, followed by Thailand with 4.7%. Okay. And what are the projections for 2023? Mm, when, it, uh, when, uh, when it comes to estimates, we need to, to bear in mind <laughs> that although climate issues are considered, okay, they, their changes are directly involved and can change the forecast made by the best specialists in the field, okay? But the, the CONAB from Brazil, in its latest uh, bulletin forecast, a new record harvest for soybeans of 152 million tons, of which uh, it's estimated that 52 million tons will be crushed. Due, the, due to the, the, the high percentage of crushing, the forecast exports for the grain are about 90 million tons in 23. For soybean meal, uh, estimates uh, indicate a production of approximately 40, 40 million tons, which will maintain the heating exports foreseen as a 20 million tons close to the values exporting in 22 in the last year. Uh, as for soybean oil, Conab estimates not only an increase in production, but also in the internal demand for the product and consequently a lower volume of oil should be exported, reaching only 1.8 million tons, sorry. Uh, it's uh, an important point. Uh, ah, it's important to point out that this, these exports may be higher if there are harvest problems in Argentina, as it has been predicted. Uh, with the estimates increase in the domestic consumption of soybean oil, mainly to produce, produce biodiesel. Uh, and the estimation production of soybean oil in 23 is 10.75 million tons. A lot of numbers, Camila. <laughs> A lot of interesting facts, Luis. So thank you very much, Luis, for your insights and your participation. Thank you, Camila. Thank you. And now we will continue with our next topic, Brazilian agribusiness and plant health as a pillar of food security. And I want to invite Patricia Teló and Valmir Duarte, both from Agronomica, to talk about this. So Brazilian agribusiness reaffirms year after year its important role in the economic evolution of Brazil, boosting its position as one of the main leaders in the supply of food vegetable fibers, and biofuels. This places the production and export of agricultural commodities as one of the pillars of the 
Brazilian economy. Now my first question for them is, which factors can be considered the main contributors to the record-breaking agricultural production verified each year in Brazil? So, Camila, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for this invitation um, and say that it's a pleasure to be here with you. So, uh, two main factors uh, have been associated with Brazil's agriculture growth reflected and, and its role on the foreign market. First of all, the mechanization of the Brazilian countryside experienced since uh, the second half of the 20th century and the agriculture development of uh, rural areas in our country within the national borders in the same period. Uh, much of these areas used to be dedicated only to livestock production and management have given uh, way to cultivated areas. And although the expansion has been vastly carried out with uh, traditional models, we can infer that the productivity increased. And in recent years, we can say the expressive results of Brazil regarding agriculture production can be attributed to the intensive use of technologies, new technologies, uh, the improvement of environment legislation, the development and uh, the use of different production systems, and of course, uh, the availability and diversity of natural resources we have here in our country. Thank you, Patricia. Yeah, so, I would like just to complement sorry. something. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, go ahead. Thank you, Camila. Uh, I, I would uh, summing up uh, the actual scenario, yeah, saying that uh, the major point about the improvement of Brazil is exports. Yeah, exports. Just to, to, put, to put one of the, the ingredients. The other point that changed Brazil in the last years was the organization of the farmers. Yeah. I think that's very important uh, point because we have suppliers and the farmers, yeah, and we have big powers in is is a kind of fight, yeah. And the grow the farmers are more organized; they make more money with the exports, and this allowed them to be more organized, to get better price, and to bargain. This is a, a really a major issue. Uh, trying to figure out what happens with Brazil in the last years. Thank you, Valmir. So all this development is then expressed in exports, a fact that positions Brazil so well in the world ranking of agricultural commodities. It also makes us think that the country could also be self-sufficient in terms of production. Can we say that Brazil is a self-sufficient country when it comes to agribusiness? Uh, first, I think it's important to remember the difference be uh, between the concept of uh, agribusiness and agriculture, and so that we can minimize um, uh, using understands of this answer. Agribusiness uh, represent, represents the companies of supply, industrialization, distribution, service providers, that it's the entire chain. The concept of agriculture is narrower and refers to the production of plant-based food. In terms of food production, uh, Brazil stands out for all the aspects we have already addressed in this presentation, such as uh, a significant expansion of the cultivation area. And in the sense, agribusiness is dependent on important import aspects. Uh, we can say among the products imported for the development of agribusiness in Brazil, we can mention fertilizers, uh, chemical and biological products, botanical seeds, uh, and true seeds. Uh, Brazil is a relevant importer of seeds, especially minor crops, from several countries around the world. We import potato, for example, from several regions of European community. And we are also importing uh, ornamental plant seedlings, uh, such as orchids from Taiwan and Thailand, among others. So we can say this generates an intense and diversified transit of import of agricultural products to meet our national demands. 
Uh, Camila, I would like to compliment yeah, what Patricia said, because we live nowadays in a selfish world. Yeah, When you say you are self-sufficient, yeah, it means you can do all by yourself. I know the context is different, but you think uh, actually is there is no room for self-sufficient country or individuals or states or anyone. We are all integrated. That's the reason I, I, I would emphasize what Patricia said, that we really, we are interconnected. Anything that happens like the, the Russian uh, war against uh, Ukraine, yeah, affect everybody, everybody. Another point we can talk about COVID. Yeah, COVID affect everyone yeah, in the world. Yeah, independent if you are sick or not. So Brazil is not self-sufficient in this kind of scenario and analogy. Thank you, thank you for your insights. And well, Agronomica is a laboratory that belongs to the National Network of Agricultural Laboratories of the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Food Supply of Brazil for more than 16 years. It has a very robust scope of tests accredited by ISO 17025-2005 in the areas of phytosanitary diagnosis, biological control, seeds, efficacy, and agronomic applicability. We can state that it is one of the few laboratories with this diversification of services directly linked to primary food production. So working within Brazil, a continental country rich in diversity and possibilities, how does Agronomica position its services? Uh, well, the trade in agriculture supplies products and by products with really broad, intense and complex here in Brazil uh, is a fact that generate countless possibilities for national and international operations. Uh, at the national level, we can say we provide analysis services to seed multiplier companies, uh, associations, cooperatives, research institutions, small, medium and large uh, rural producer growers. Regarding international transit, uh, Brazil authorizes the import of more than 700 regulated items uh, of plant related products from more than uh, 150 countries. Uh, this complexifies the activity of laboratories in phytosanitary diagnosis because each authorized import is checked for a series of pests as established by phytosanitary requirements according to the rules of the International Convention. And in export, uh, we make always uh, we make a, con a continuous effort to keep and to maintain an updated scope for testing. Camila, one thing that you oh, we need to think about: um, what's the difference to produce for national or international consumption? Yeah, we are all together, humanity. Yeah, we 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 need quality in the national and international. So the national market should uh, use the same service that Agronomica because we are trying to get products without pests. It is important national and international. If you have pests, some most of the time you have to use pesticides, and so you have residues. So the market is not uh, limited to Brazil or the world is not the internet. Everyone needs to have good food, healthy food. That's the point. So it's a good market. Thank you, Valmir. And, and now that you're talking about pests, uh, I want to ask you the last question and I, 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 want, I want you to give me a quick answer because of the time. But one of the most important as aspects of a more sustainable planet is food security which deals with the implementation of policies to ensure that all people always have rightful access to food in quantity and quality appropriated for a healthy and active life. This can be addressed on the perspectives of climate change, plant health, food safety and animal feed. So regarding this topic and in relation to the detection and identification of pests, how does Agronomica contribute to food safety? 
Well, the mission of Agronomica is to support the health of plants and to combat traits by offering innovation and technology in laboratory analysis for the early and effective detection of pests. This is the most important. Plant health is a key factor for sustainable and competitive agriculture. We estimated that 8% of human food as well, uh, animal feed, comes from vegetables. The introduction and spread of plant pests and disease between food crops and other plant species have important global consequences for growers. Uh, plant health has been an international team since the world experienced several epidemics caused by agriculture pests. Nowadays, Global, uh, globalized uh, trading markets uh, increase the human mobility, disruptions generated by the e-commerce, climate change and the speed of the modern world have increased our vulnerability to pests, as well as favored the rapid development in altered ecosystems. To provide plant health is to make a much more cost-effective investment than dealing with the aftermath of phytosanitary emergencies and the devastating impacts. Health plants generate higher incomes, uh, biodiversity maintenance, sustainability, higher profitability, lower poverty rates, less hunger, safe trade, and greater economy development. That's why we act strongly together with the official programs of the Minister of Agriculture in Brazil, seeking to protect Brazil's agriculture frontiers. Patagenos are major traits to the Brazilian economy and society. Yeah, I, I would say that we have to educate our children to see health, plant, uh, health of plants as a go global issue. Yeah, but children can understand that you, uh, how can understand that each one affects each, each other? Yeah, the environment, uh, the animals, and this is a kind of education. We need to educate our society to see the service like Agronomica does or Cotecnica in general is to help a better uh, health world. So, muito obrigado, Patricia and Valmir, for your participation. Yeah. I don't speak Portuguese, but that's all I can say. <laughs> so, uh, now for our next topic, I want to invite Francisco Ferrer to talk about Spanish agribusiness and food safety as a pillar of food security. Fito soil, following the ones of Nova in the Netherlands and Neutron in Italy, allows Cotecna to further expand its European laboratory network and expertise in the food safety sector. So Francisco, how do we position our agri expertise in Europe versus in Latin America? Yeah, thank you for your question, Camila. Um, well, both both areas are very different in the kind of production, but are also very similar in their leading positions in the agri food. My colleagues have been talking about, uh, especially about uh, Brazil, but Latin America, including Brazil, has the greatest potential to be the world uh, food hub of the future for the world. But uh, right now, uh, the European Union continues in the leading position uh, in this uh, position as the world's biggest exporter in the agri-food sector. Uh, for example, in the top three main products that are uh, exported from the EU, we have wine, pasta, or uh, products, the prepared products from food. And in the top five destinations, we have still countries like US, USA, China, uh, Great Britain, Switzerland. So we are still uh, doing part of the exportation that now we will cover by uh, Latin America next year. In talking about imports, uh, yeah, the European Union is uh, sourcing three main type of products that is covering this uh, other way of the fruit production that is uh, related to the products from the other countries that cannot be naturally produced in the European Union, uh, like pro tropical products or coffee or dried fruits. And we are also receiving products that are used for the um, production of meat uh, or uh, production of animal feed and also products that are used as ingredients in the processing. So 
we are receiving this uh, raw materials and these commodities and we are producing the 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 final product the full product um it was interesting to hear from my colleagues the data about uh, brazil and how they are stands uh, like the highest grown in sales in the european union because of soybeans and all uh, different oils from vegetables the or origins this is part of the European Union, but talking about Spain, uh, we are uh, the second biggest producer in the in the European Union of fruits and vegetables, only behind France, but it's uh, related to the to the you know, to the feel and extension that they have to produce. But it's in, interesting to see that we are the sixth in the talking about globally about the the production the production of the world. Uh, we are the main exporter in the European Union and uh, one of the leading worldwide production, uh, producer and exporter. So uh, this uh, fruit and vegetable uh, sector is heavily export focused is uh, around the 50% of the production is sent overseas. And um, this is related to to this offer that can be um, uh, shown by the Spanish uh, production is uh, due to the special conditions uh, that we have for the climate. Also, the work the work that we have been done during these uh, years that have arrived to a sophistication of the Spanish plant health protection, and uh, also about this high technological development that we have performed in our crop farms. In this matter, I'm talking about the Spanish market, it's, in, it's uh, important to see that uh, as we have the others, these others the laboratories, uh, feed soil was uh, created uh, in a moment of expansion and specialization of the sector in Spain. So we, we are really linked to our agricultural sector and the agri-food uh, evolution in Spain. Our first projects were intended to support the growers during this specialization in the, here in the southeast of Spain, where we are located, with the knowledge about the quality of soil, about the water for irrigation, about the plants, and how to produce uh, fresh fruits and vegetables of quality and in a safety way. Uh, this uh, comp this uh, status and composition of these three elements is, st is still very, very important as uh, the plant diseases, like our colleagues uh, of Agronomica was, were telling. Uh, these are key aspects for the agriculture. Thank you, Francisco. And one, one more question for you. Uh, mm -hmm. The farm to fork strategy in the European Union has set complicated goals for 2030 as part of the European Green Deal, which are the challenges for the next years in terms of food security. So how is fetal soil going to contribute with the food safety perspective? Yeah, yeah. Part to fork is uh, it's an important challenge for the whole food chain. And in this way, the plant health is uh, key for the food security. As we, talk, we see with agronomica, like the food safety is key for the final customers. So in this point, uh, food safety is one of the pillars in the farm to fork strategy. And from that point, we are collaborating with, with all the sector. Uh, but for example, the European Commission announced uh, two years ago two pesticide reduction targets uh, about the reduction of the use of chemical pesticides and uh, hazardous uh, pesticides. Uh, it's a bit controversy for the agronomists because it's uh, difficult to manage uh, the fighting against pests with uh, the changes that we have in the weather and keeping the products in the market during the whole year. But it's also important to take care and avoid the use of uh, this kind of uh, pesticide can, that can be very hazardous for the for the environment. Also, to avoid the use of products that can be um, substituted by other that can be more uh, ecological or uh, yeah, less de uh, dangerous for, for us. And from this perspective, uh, Fido Soil have been supporting the food, the food chain with the highest performance in quality and safety control. Always that is necessary and only in the stages that we have in the food chain. 
for example, the, the guide and advertising of the best agricultural practices, helping with the needs of the soil and uh, crops, and supporting to fulfill the requirements of each destination market. It's uh, our key part to produce the best product and keep the consumers safe in a food safety um, topic. So thank you very much, uh, Francisco, for your thank valuable you. participation. And now we come to the case studies section and to enter the real life in the operations of Cotegna as big leaders. So our experts will be talking about olive production. So olive cultivation is a recent practice in Brazil, especially when compared to Spain, one of the most traditional and most relevant olive oil producers in the world. So according to the International Olive Council, Brazil is one of the largest importers of olive oil. In 2021 alone, the country imported more than 100 million liters of the product, which represents almost the total of national consumption. On the other hand, the volume of olive oil produced from olive trees in our country has grown 70, 773% in the last five years, especially in Rio Grande do Sul, the most southern state of the country, where Agronomica head office is located. We've learned that Agronomica is located in a very promising region for the cultivation of the olive crop. How do you perceive the increases in production and how does the laboratory participate in this segment so important to the Brazilian economy? So the mm -hmm. floor is open. <laughs> Okay, according to data from the Department of Agriculture, our state went from a production of 58,000 liters for, of olive oil in 2018 to 448,000 in 2022. Nowadays, olive orchards throughout Brazil occupy about 10,000 hectares, and in 2025, we expect the cultivation area to reach around 20,000 hectares. So we might realize that olive growing has an immense productive potential for our region and country, considering the expansion of cultivated areas, uh, the potential of consumer market, and above all, the quality of the oil we produce here in Brazil. Since our country's climate is mostly tropical, and but also temperate and subtropical in the south, Olive trees can be infected by several pathogens, such as by roses, fungi, bacteria, and phytoplasmas. And these pathogens may cause no disease and others of unknown etiology, uh, which can be very limiting for our productivity. Agronomica services are useful in this context because, as we offer phytosanitary diagnostic analysis and evaluation tests of biological and chemical product efficacy uh, seasonally used. One thing that is important to emphasize is when you start any business, you have to have clean material like uh, seedlings. Yeah, so if you start a orchard with uh, infected plants, you compromise all the investment. So Agronomica, if you, if you want to test your seedlings when you buy the seedlings, is one service that Agronomica can do. Another one is if you monitor, for example, if you if you buy seedlings for other countries, yeah, then we have a minister of agriculture taking care, but they they send the material to Agronomica. But talking about nationally, uh, a grower, a farmer needs to monitor the the orchard. So to monitor, he needs to take the samples and send to the laboratory so we can help that. Because sometimes you have a healthy orchard and you maybe you have one tree that's infected. Yeah, and that tree can, uh, the pest can pass to the other plants. So monitoring needs a laboratory service. So Agronomica can help is just to, giving one example, but that's the way just complementing what Patricia said. Thank you, Camila. Thank you, Valmir. Thank you, Patricia. And one, one more question for you. So we are not all specialists 
on the matter, but we can infer that the pests detected and identified by Agronomica can affect the quality of the olive oil produced. How can testing, inspection, and certification services assist on this? So, reasons in oils and any other vegetable product depends uh, on a production chain. A single pest can break the grain in oil production chains, uh, similar to the disruptions to global markets caused by Russia's war on Ukraine. Uh, a pest like the bacteria Shilella fastidiosa has exposed the vulnerabilities of. How can Agronomica help? Uh, Shilella fastidiosa is a bacterium that has several subspecies. When attacks uh, the olive tree, Agronomica is able to identify the subspecies essential in the release of import of olive tree seedlings or in the survey of the occurrence of this pest in your charts. Plants such as olive trees, apple trees, uh, vines, and other propagated vegetably uh, may require this type of servicing. However, they only occur if there is an official regulation. Uh, for this reason, Agronomica developed, as we said before, and presented to the Minister of Agriculture in 2020, a national certification program for seedlings, which aims the certification of seedlings, especially with regard to quarantine pests in Brazil. Yeah, I, I would say that um, like, like a human, human disease, yeah, what a lab can help uh, when you have a cold, you 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 think could be COVID, so you need to test. Yeah, Agronomica does this kind of service. Yeah, a, a cotectica in general, I think, must be seen like a, a player, one of the player. But uh, sometimes we just see the the tree. What I mean, you don't see the forest. Actor agronomica is not a uh, policy, like a policy that is something negative, but it's something that is going to help the whole chain. So the service of agronomica, in analogy, is to help you to cut the problems in the beginning. Yeah, if, if, I, if, I, if I tell a few words, that's true that the, the Part of agronomic is, is key for the uh, for the food security, and also now with uh, this complement with agronomica, feed of soil offering, uh, it's important to perform this combination that can be um, in, very important to bring value uh, to the whole members of the food chain and also to the food safety sector. It's important that with the agronomic conditions that we have in trees and the safety of the raw olive that are key for the quality of the oil, oil uh, the growers and oil processors can work closely also with us and assure the best conditions in the field and uh, also with the soil that they are working, but with the final product that they are, that they are receiving and uh, producing after the harvest. Francisco, there's one thing that uh, talking about agronomica, maybe the scenario that uh, happens in Brazil doesn't happen in other countries. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we occupy um, um, uh, one space that is open, but there is some niche, maybe in Spain, in France, in Italy, every place that uh, Cotecnica uh, act. So Agronomica can use this kind of expertise to help to start the business in the other countries. Because Agronomica grow, uh, grew slow by slow, day by day. Yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. if we want to, to have Cotecnica or Agronomica Cotecnica worldwide, we need to look for niches. And the mm -hmm. environments are different. Generally, yep. are regulated. Uh, scenario is the best one. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean. Thank you, Francisco, Almir, and Patricia. And now we come to the Q and A session, and we have a question for Agronomica. So it says, "Do you think that the phytosanitary barriers currently applied by Brazil are sufficient to guarantee the safety of our agriculture?" 
Yeah, I would say for uh, for sure not. Yeah, uh, we have uh, we uh, for example, if you if you think about uh, uh, other scenario, yeah, when you, you can bring seeds and analyze some uh, samples of these seeds, you have a uh, uh, for example, tons of seeds, and you take 100 grams of these seeds and you analyze. You you cannot guarantee that th there is no pest. You have a, a better sample, but maybe uh, is not guaranteed. So you, you we have to uh, work with the field with the farmer, and we we have to be organized in a way that the farmers wants to have this kind of service. Yeah, so I would say no, it's not enough just to have international barriers for any country. Okay, thank you, Valmir. So any more questions for our experts from the audience? No more questions. There is another one. Uh, there is another one. Thank you, Alexia. So we have another question also for Agronomica. It says, what is the percentage of women working at Agronomica and what is the secret of success of the company with all the female workforce in an industry mostly led by men? That's a good question. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, it's a good question, Camila. It's interesting and a recurring question. Uh, today, uh, we can say that 90% of our team is composed of women. And I can say that uh, today in Brazil, in the agribusiness segment, uh, has aroused the interest in effect and effective participation of many women. It's not only here at Agronomica, but in different areas, in different, different activities in our country related to agribusiness. But uh, the secret of our success uh, is the participation of a very strong and prepared team, considering the 9% of women, but also the 10% of men. Uh, but I can say that the, the work developed at Agronomica attracts women because laboratory activity requires finer skills, uh, a lot of concentration and discipline to work. And this doesn't mean that men can't perform these activities. No, not what I'm saying. But uh, women identify themselves more with this kind of activities. And besides these, uh, I think there is a natural attraction because women seek challenges and want to assume positions that never before dream. <laughs> Trying to, to put in another hand, I would say that uh, despite the, the issue of um, women participation, I would say that the secret of Agronomica is to look for quality assurance, always. And quality assurance um, uh, allows uh, the credentials of Agronomica by the Minister of Agriculture. So uh, another point I say that uh, uh, we, in our experience, maybe all of us, yeah, quality assurance is a little boring. <laughs> I don't Sometimes. agree with him, but he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> and the girls are more prepared. I'm sure about that. Our quality manager can't hear you from here today. <laughs> <laughs> we will have problems. <laughs> Girl power. So thank you, Almir and Patricia. And, and I'm very proud to, to meet and to work with some of the talented women from Agronomica. So thank you. And it seems like we have come to the end of the of this talk show. So I really want to thank our special guests and experts for their participation in this talk show. And I also want to thank the audience for attending this event and for their questions. And last but not least, a big thanks to the communications team for organizing this event. So see you soon. Hasta la próxima. Muchas gracias. Ciao, Camila. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao, everybody. See you. Bye-bye.